Hi everybody, this is David Rocco Ficini of Most Stop Mo. In this episode, I interview musician Danny Weinkoff and animation director Mike Owens. I got to Zoom to Lindbrook, New York to chat with musician Danny Weinkoff of They Might Be Giants to discuss the production of his most recent animated music video for his children's album, Words. Then we're joined a little bit later by animation director of Words, Mike Owens, in St. Paul, Minnesota. The three of us got to delve into creating an animated music video through a collaboration of 25 animators across six countries. Now, although this interview with Danny was planned during the 2020 Mo Stop Mo Stop Motion Shorts Fest, due to technical issues, we've decided to revisit the interview and provide it as an addendum to the festival. Speaking of our 2021 Stop Motion Shorts Fest, please join us for a live rebroadcast of our festival over the Christmas weekend. From December 25th through the 27th, we will be re-airing our most Stop Mo Stop Motion Shorts Fest for 2021. Visit our Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube page for more information, or just visit mostopmo.com and look under festivals for a link to that broadcast. Also, I'm excited to announce that we are going to try something a little new with our Stop Motion Festival. We are going to do a mini festival that is focused on Star Wars animation. Our May the 4th Be With You Stop Motion Shorts Fest is now accepting entries through our Film Freeway website. So check that out by going to mostopmo.com and following the links. We will be having the screening of all those submitted shorts on Wednesday, May the 4th, 2022. So keep an eye out for that information. Now I'm happy to present my interview with Danny Weinkoff and Mike Owens. Hey, Danny, is that you? That's me. Hey. Hey. Nice to virtually meet you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Likewise. I, th- I felt like I met you because I saw you. I watched, oh. you know, I watched the uh, presentation, although I couldn't get in. Um. <laughs> I, you know, I apologize. We were doing something new with the technology. It was the first time we were doing a live broadcast. And we found out that our waiting room had a capacity of 10 people. And the filmmakers who were on there were supposed to have gotten out but i don't know if that was clear to them so we can make room and you ended up being in a different room so it just i'm so sorry about that yeah it's okay i mean in the afternoon i i hooked up with whoever your tech person was or whatever and it seemed so Edwin, easy yeah. yeah and then it wasn't well, that's, quite so easy you, later on. <laughs> it's funny because yeah. i don't know like the whole uh i don't know if you ever heard if it's like bad tech good show good tech right. bad show <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. We always we say that on on tour as well. If we have a a lousy sound check, we're like, ah, the show will be good. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I guess the tech with Edwin run went too well beforehand. <laughs> right. 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 Cool. Um. Yeah. yeah just so you know, uh, we've already sure. like this has already started recording. So depending on how this goes, we'll probably like go you know into it once Mike get joins the call. Just so you know, we're recording though. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like your setup there. Is that is that your jam space or just kind of more of a, a place uh, where you keep st- all your stuff? No, it's my studio. It's uh, yeah. I have my uh, all my recording equipment's on this side, and uh, it's a, a room full of instruments, basically, and and, and you know, computer and, and a couple of pianos and stuff. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And- where are you? You're in New York or outside New yeah, York? Yeah, I'm in I'm I'm in uh, Western Nassau County. I'm in Lynbrook. It's basically Brooklyn with the words turned around. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's actually how it got its name as well. Um, but um, okay. yeah, so I'm close. I'm you know it's uh, 35 minutes to Midtown on a train, and 10 to 15 minutes to the beach, uh, you know, in a car. Wow. So nice. Yeah, it's and I have kids. It's it's. it's that sounds it's like a, a decent good setup. place to have some, you know, yeah, have some space and still be able to get where I need to be for rehearsals and, and travel and stuff. So it's right. good. Yeah. Are you originally from the East Coast? Yeah, yeah. I'm originally from this same town. Um, oh, and really? I, yeah, I moved to Manhattan for 20 something years and then 
uh, we just wound up back here. Yeah. Okay. Um, when, when we decided to have kids, we wound up coming back out here. Okay, there he nice. is. Hey. There's Magic Mike. There he is. <laughs> How's it going, Mike? It's going well. Keep your clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> Better Glad you had to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you, man? Good. Dave, I even sat in the same spot for consistency. I thought it would help. That's fine. I, I <laughs> couldn't sit in the same spot because uh, I'm on the road. I've been traveling yeah. cross country in a van since April. <laughs> so uh, right now I'm in Florida at my aunt's house. Uh, and I got this uh, nice little it's a background. Microphone. But at least you're at least you have some eye for detail. I guess <laughs> I guess it's a part of your profession, so you have to do that. Yeah, yeah. The traveling um, must was, be. Uh, how is it working out with all these different raging variants? And <laughs> you know, it's it's been a very interesting social experiment. I've been traveling as I go, and I've been kind of documenting things along the way, and. Uh, I actually got my second vax with uh, in Minnesota and stayed at Mike's house for a while. And um, I felt like, oh, great, second vax, things will open up, I'll be able to do some things more socially. But you know, I just came up from the Florida Keys. Uh, I spent like a week there. And it's like nobody at all is wearing a mask anywhere. Right, right. And I'm wearing you're a guaranteed mask to get in. syphilis coming from there. So you at least have that. <laughs> Yeah, right. By the way, Mike, we've already started recording this interview. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. Hey, yeah, Mike I, is Mike is speaking. He's speaking from personal experience. You know, you know, you know. All, all his trips to the Keys. You know. <laughs> um, yeah, that's so. why I, I followed some of his advice of, of where not to go when he went to the Keys last. So I, th yeah, I yeah. thank you for that, Mike. I feel I mean, you're welcome. Healthy. You're welcome. Around here, you don't have to. The further you get from New York City. New York City is pretty locked down. Pretty people are pretty conservative about wearing their masks and and uh, and, and giving space and all of that. Um, you know, the minute you drive outside of the city, the further you get, it, it it essentially disappears. You go to a restaurant out in Suffolk County. Yeah. Nobody, not not the waiters. Nobody's wearing wearing masks, and um, you know, it's it, uh, it's tough. When I was in. When I, when I was in New York proper, I really liked the system that they had that app, that new NYC safe, where it had to show your Vax card. So yes. that was kind of interesting. I only went to outdoor cafes because I was there more towards the summer. But you're right. It's like uh, I went in different areas around New York, like uh, went up in the Catskills. I was in uh, the Hamptons and stuff. And it's definitely a different culture, like the further yeah, yeah. out you go. Yeah, yeah. And it's like even if, at, my, at my family's house, uh, uh, my, I'm staying with my aunt and she's got nine kids and there's very, there's like dividing lines on philosophies. Oh, like, man. <laughs> luckily my aunt and I are aligned. So that works. So. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 But, um, okay. yeah, thanks for jumping. Thanks for jumping on, on this call and, uh, kind of, I'm going to, we're going to be adding this as a supplemental to, uh, we're going to put it in like, uh, in our rebroadcast, we're going to do a new rebroadcast on the Christmas weekend for the festival. And also post this on YouTube. So that, thank you guys for joining and making the time for sure. this, especially the leading up to the holidays. Um, sure. So let's let's uh, let's talk about your album, Danny. Uh, uh, the name of the album, and then kind of the motivation of how you uh, reached out to get some of these videos done, especially the the video words for your album. Sure, uh, sure. Um, my most recent album is called Words, um, and it's the it's the sixth album that I'm releasing as a solo, like children's artist uh, outside of They Might Be Giants. Um, I started writing children's music with They Might Be Giants, and I'm, I've been there, the bass player for They Might Be Giants for twenty some odd years now. I, I'm going to stop counting, but um, you know, love being in the band. Um, but I, at a certain point, I started making my own albums cause, just because I had material building up. Um, anyway, this album is the sixth album. It's the first themed album that I've done. And so all of the, the songs on the album uh, relate to the theme of words. So there's a song about hyperbole. There's a song about alliteration. There's silent letters. There's nouns, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then the song words is sort of, it's the one song that's not um, as educationally based. It's more... Uh, it still has a, it, it, it has a definite message to it. And the message that I wanted to convey was basically just that 
you know, words at the time that I was making the record, we were on lockdown and the politics in this country was so divisive. Um, and it seemed that, like there was so much ugliness from both sides of the spectrum. And I, I just felt like, man, it's gotta be, it's, got, it's tough enough to be an adult. It's gotta be really tough to be a child at this point in time. If they're, you know, if their parents, maybe their parents don't agree on things or their neighbors don't agree or they're just watching the news with their family, it's got to be a little confusing, you know, why everybody's so yeah. hostile. So I just wanted to point out that, you know, words can be beautiful. Words can be up, uplifting and encouraging and stuff. And I just took that idea and put it into a song. And then um, since the album is named Words and it's sort of the general vibe of the the whole project, I, I thought, well, let's try to make a video for this, but I don't have a big bu budget. I do most of the work myself on my, my own label, etc. cetera. Um, although this album actually came out on a, a, a label called Eight Pound Gorilla. Um, but um, I do, you know, I do all the recording in my own studio, etc. I play most of the instruments and, and, you know, almost all the music and then I bring in singers and things. Um, but so uh, I reached out to Eric, who is uh, friends with Mike, and uh, Eric had done some video work for me in the past. We did stuff with Sesame Street. He did a video for me on my, one of my solo records. And I, I loved his work. And I just said, hey, do you know of anybody that might have interns or, uh, you know, like newbies that want to, that really just want to get their feet wet and, and, and dive into something and, and uh, you know, maybe not be so much about the, the uh, you know, the, the cost. Um, and so he he contacted Mike and then the next thing we know, he got back to me and said, Hey, Mike knows a lot of people. <laughs> and, you know, Mike doesn't know just people that are, you know, in Minneapolis or the Minnesota area. He knows people, turns out that they know people, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, fast forward to, I'm speaking now with Mike and Eric, who were the, the, the co-producers of the whole video uh, and directed it and everything and came up with the storyline, et cetera. They, uh, you know, compiled a, a group of like 25 animators from all over the world. Six different countries were on this Discord meeting and there's guys from Holland talking with people from Barbados. <laughs> and it, it was, it be became this wonderful, like, like really heartwarming, amazing experience that was not on my part planned at all. And un really, really unexpected. And it was, like, maybe part of it was COVID or, you know, and people wanting to work with, uh, with each other, but everybody, the, the collaborative spirit was amazing. Um, the, 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 you know, like listening, and, and I'm really not taking any credit for this. These guys did it, Mike and Eric really did it. And then all of the animators. And, to, and thanks to all the great work, we, they decided that it would be okay if I'd made donations to, to charities that, and they all picked their own favorite charities and made donations to the charities. So it was just, not just good work coming in for the spirit of working together and collaborating, but then that the, the proceeds would go out to charity. Yeah. And it just That's was, it was I, the, things like this don't happen. It, you know, <laughs> I'm a New Yorker, especially, in, you know, like, <laughs> and I love New York and I love New Yorkers, but like the, the way that everybody just like, you know, we'd get on a, a discord meeting and, and Mike or Eric would be running the meeting and then, these guys from Holland be joking around like, oh, well, you know, we work in this, we work in plasticine. What do you guys do? All right, well, you start the shot and we'll finish it up. And then what about this other shot? I can only do this much. And then I have another project coming in three days. Can somebody finish that for me? And then somebody from wherever, from Massachusetts is like, oh yeah, I'll do that. And it, it just was, it was a wonderful, really, really fantastic experience. And it, it sort of goes hand in hand with what I was intending the message to be. Um, right. And as I said, I, it was not planned. It just really worked out that way. But it was, it was one of the greatest, really satisfying experiences I've had. And, and artistically, it wasn't my hand. I had already done my work. You know, these guys became the artists, but they did a super nice job. They really captured the spirit of the song and actually sort of brought it out more. I feel like the song is better with the video than it is <laughs> without the video. So uh -huh. they, you know, and that's the, that's, that's the ultimate you know, for me, that's the ultimate goal of the video. If you can, you know, enhance what's already there, then, you know, that's fantastic. Sure. And they, they certainly did. And it's, they did a great job. Yeah, it was, it was a, a terrific experience on my, my, you know, 
uh, sort of as a spectator almost. Um, yeah. So you kind of handed the baton to both Eric and Mike for them Absolutely, to kind of even, yeah, like yeah. structure everything. <laughs> Yeah, they're the pros. They, you know, they know the medium and they, you know, they speak the language and, and you know, I know what I liked or didn't like. I made a couple of little suggestions. My brother's a television producer. He, he produces for CBS Sports. So at one point I, okay. I showed him a couple of clips and he had a couple of little suggestions and I passed them on and they were able to implement them like within minutes. You know, I'd, I'd make a <laughs> suggestion right. and then yeah, either Mike or Eric would literally send me back. How about this? And it would be done. already. <laughs> I'd be like, OK, yes, that's. That's great. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the skill level was uh, pretty high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's such, it's like it is a it's a nice light loving song too, uh, and it's just like fun. It's definitely like kids. Yeah. Well, that's the other uh, thing. I mean, I I don't want to keep going on and on. I, I feel like I'm just a no, please, ramble, please. rambling. Rambling. But um, I didn't want. <laughs> Mike to had his chance during the fest. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't in intend for it to be at all um, polarizing or controversial or anything. I know I used the word uh, woke and I almost kind of regret it now because when I wrote the song, it, it, it didn't, it, now it's taken on this other meaning. Yeah. You know, that Fox right. News and people have taken that word and made it a, a four letter word. And really, yeah. it's not, that's not my intention at all. I really just wanted it to be something for children to motivate them to be positive and to be careful when you know even when they're speaking with each other like encourage your 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 classmates and your peers don't put them down you know that kind of thing like just and it, may, it goes a long way if, you know somebody says something nice to you can make your whole whole day better it's it's a simple thing um, and that's really it's right. that kind of simplicity in the message is really what i was looking for um, you know, of course, I have my own personal feelings about things that were going on in the world and the bigger, you know, the bigger events and stuff. But in, in the, with the intent of the song, I really wanted it to be gentle and fun. And th that was really the spirit, the colors that were used, the, the way the animation worked with the claymation and the, and the different characters and things. It's 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 lighthearted and, and uh, you know, it's it just is, it's worked so perfectly for the music. Yeah, uh, I mean, like I said, across the board, I, I hear what you're saying. It's interesting with our climate that, and even like our news cycle, that something that could be, you know, like the word that you said, woke, it's like, like that was very positive and informative. And like, it depends on that spectrum. But what I think you're with your overarching message with that song and how it's also like, basically the name of the album, it's, it's not just a lesson for kids. <laughs> It's, right it's well, a lesson right, for everybody well, you know it's a kid's it, album but it's like right i well, mean you generally even almost like with it. woke in it even with woke in it it's almost like a lesson for adults it's not like it's like why are we taking words which do have power and the power can change depending on who's listening and what they want to say or hear but it's like it's a message to adults that, and actually because when i first heard that i was like oh woke, that's interesting and i started thinking about it more and i was like actually i kind of like that it's in there because it is the very specific example of the power of word. And who knows like how that might shift going down the line, you know? Right. Right. And yeah. And, and, and you know, the a fundamental thing again is that it's just words really matter. They do matter. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And, you know, and that I, I, maybe I am speaking to the parents in a way when I say that too, but I, I don't want to be a preachy guy. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't claim to know any more than anybody else. But I do sure. see that, you know, the effect of words can be really either positive or negative on somebody. So let's, you know, spread some positivity. Um, definitely. I mean, it's yeah. definitely well-intentioned. And like, like you said, with the colors and the design and everything that Mike and Eric pulled off with all those yeah. people, I mean, around the world, obviously there's people who feel similarly and that song kind of inspired the visuals. Oh yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I, I, I joked at one point, the video was maybe halfway done halfway through the process. And again, I was feeling a little bit like just amazed at the, the amount of talent and the effort everybody was putting in. Um, but I said, I kind of wish I'd written a better song, <laughs> you know, and the guys from Holland were like cracking up and I didn't know, you know, like, you know, they're Dutch guys. You sound like a consummate artist, never happy with yeah. what you've actually done. No, I, it's like, okay. You it's got good, George but, Lucas you know. syndrome. You want to go back and re-edit yeah, yeah. your work just as you completed it or is this successful, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, I just, you know, I was, I, I, I wanted something that would measure up to, to because they, you know, they were conveying the meaning so well. So I was hoping right. that the music, the music, you know, 
uh, served its purpose. Yeah. So with you, with you saying that, Danny, Mike, when you heard the song and like you guys start putting it together, how collaborative was it on your end versus the direction that you guys saw? I know like you've worked with so many people and, you know, visually speaking, a lot of like-minded right. animators are going to come up with some ideas, but like if Danny's basically yeah. kind of handing a, a, a baton to you, which is, it could be a gift for a director. It could also be a curse. No, yeah, no doubt. It's, um, it was sort of, uh, First of all, Danny, thank you for uh, telling us, you know, the experience that you had with this that uh, makes me feel pretty good. Because um, that was sort of the way you described the, the meaning of the song is sort of what we wanted to continue that baton passing. Um, it's sort of like if you can't change everybody, but you can change one person at a time. And there's something about this collaborative project where people were hungry for something that was better, like the one of the animators um, Ellie is a teacher in, over in Wisconsin. She's from Iran. She's the one from Iran. Um, how like she just wrote a post about how working on that this project and doing her scene with the advocate part with the people holding up signs um, helped her get through lockdown and that like just like feeling good about something. And so everyone was so willing to participate in it. Uh, so the direction side of it wasn't too bad. Like we did, you know, Eric went and did a thumbnail pass of storyboards to give us a basic in and out, a repeating chorus, like, you know, so that those sort of visual cues to build on so that we can assign people, here's 10 seconds, here's four seconds, what have you, and a color palette and a few style samples. That plus everyone's willingness to do something that was like not, that was such the opposite of what we were experiencing um, made it easy to direct honestly, because it was like people just wanted to be part of something that wasn't awful. <laughs> they wanted to be, you know, something that was just the opposite of awful, something that was, uh, and then the cha the charity, uh, willing to do it for charities, that whatever they chose as animators um, and as artists and people, um, allowed that, what your intentions are with the song to continue through the work, not even the results of the work, but the people that are doing the work. So I feel like it just became proof um, to what you intended. Uh, and it, it allowed that baton of something good to be passed on and we needed it. So directing was just really just sharing in the experience. So it's almost like I had the same experience you did, Danny. I feel like I wasn't working that hard. Right. Um, well, oh, good. Because <laughs> I didn't, you know, I didn't, that, that was the thing when I initially called Eric, I didn't want anybody else to have to put out too much, you know, I just didn't want to like ask too much of people. Yeah. But if you, know, you everybody was having up, a hard time. That's the thing. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. That's, you that's it the up, idea of like community yeah. in general and animation community. Yeah. And a lot of what Dave is doing with Mo Stop Mo and community is if we, and that's how animation works. If we all take a little part of it, we make something big and great. No one does it all themselves. So it all just yeah. really is the perfect medium for that song. And I think it just, they were meant to, it was meant to meet each other. <laughs> Awesome. Right. So let me ask uh, some uh, a little bit more of a hard hitting question. Um, <laughs> Is this date line all of a sudden? Well, maybe now. Uh, <laughs> what ended up on the cutting room floor? What were the bigger? I mean, this is all beautiful story that you're telling me. And it sounds almost too good to be true. And it's like stop motion animators or animators in general who are going to want to work with you in the future, Danny. And it sounds like a great process. But I was like, let's also be realistic with the like deadlines <laughs> and all this kind of stuff was, I mean, Mike, you're saying this was like almost too easy for you to work on. And obviously yeah. you've done a lot of work and been in, uh, you know, tough situations with deadlines and deliverables. Yeah. What was what? What were the challenges of making this? Just coordinating everybody from our side, just making sure everyone had the right information and we're speaking to each other. But um, again, it really is not as hard as you might have thought, or might have, as I might have thought. Um, mm -hmm. There was a willingness to communicate um, and a, an excitement behind it. And I've always find that when there's when people care about a project it's they're willing to reach out and make sure they're staying connected so it wasn't too difficult i don't know if i'm answering the question that you're really no you about. are yeah i guess like uh, like i want to get a little more specific then talk a little bit about the pipeline and the communication almost like even like tools oh How did sure you communicate sure. with so many people and was, stuff like that yeah we use discord um which is you know and it was it was my first time ever using it so yeah, yeah. i was completely unfamiliar with it when when 
uh, Eric told me about it and then I jumped on and it, it, you could oh, you could see where everybody was at as the project was yeah. happening. You know, it's you had this and you could virtual share space work where somebody would finish a piece on. of work and yeah. post it up and you'd see, oh, that this one, this guy's halfway through. That's what theirs looks like. Let me, you know. Right. So if Danny had any any notes, he would see it in real. So almost real time. Um, and, you know, that's that's the way animation has strangely survived and everyone's thrived through the pandemic is us being able to like how to collaborate using tools like that to use Discord or Slack. I use Slack quite a bit, but these ways of in Zoom, what we're doing right now, there's these ways of communicating. Um, we're all just, you know, uh, nothing that was didn't already exist. Like we didn't have to reinvent anything. Um, and the, you know, Eric really put together a great storyboard and the package and all the designs, like down to like, you know, the, the number for the color that you're going to choose. And it was, you know, we were like, be close. Like, you know, we weren't being too strict either because you're still, you're asking a lot of people um, and for, in a short amount of time. So um, respect. So what that, was the time frame? Just kind of like, what, did, what was the time frame from start to finish? I, th I don't know, Danny. It was a matter of, it was only a couple of months. Yeah. Whole, yeah. Like three months maybe altogether yeah. Yeah. from like first discussion to like delivering. Yeah. And uh, the last couple of weeks were just waiting for like a person that was, had so much other work that they just was waiting yeah. to deliver the last shot yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 Everybody worked super quickly. A lot of people didn't really have much time and they were upfront about it. They're yeah. like, listen, we're slow right now, but in about a week and a half, we're going to be super busy. So we're going right. to jump on this thing and then somebody's got to finish it for us, whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, but mm. they, they did it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. And having, you know, having um, Eric's storyboards as an anchor for everything made it uh, much easier as well. And so we were just, he was able to share, you know, a Photoshop file with all the specs that everyone needed. We had frame rates for everybody. Um, you know, all those basic consistencies, uh, aspect ratios, um, color palettes, um, output, how you're going to output it. No one had to worry about sound, so that was a little bit easier. So they could use whatever tool they wanted, which led to the stop motion um, with our friends over at 5 a.m. Uh, in uh, the, over in Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Yeah. Um, they did a, a big bulk of the work because they took the choruses in using their plasticine and the Scrabble tiles and all that kind of stuff. So it became this really nice, consistent anchor. And that little bile that the characters they did, that was voluntary. Yeah, like that, we, yeah. that wasn't in the boards. Like he said, can we just do this? Because they were, they had a new intern at their studio and they were giving her an opportunity to work on a real project. So sure. it was, it became again, sort of a passing on situation. An opportunity for people to learn um, their the craft that they're into, uh, and sort of right. make some. I mean, making something together collaboratively of what is what animation is. Yeah. Well, I mean, it. You know what I love about this collaborative project, and even the way you guys went about doing it, is kind of like Mike and I have been talking about uh, how to get more of a pipeline of education and getting more people into. Uh, opportunities where they're going to be able to work with an Emmy award winning director or like a, you know, a renowned musician and, you know, cross pollinate with people with experience. So even if they are just newer and they're doing the little bow, which again, that was like a perfect end to a very performative right. piece of music. Right. Uh, it's, it's an, it's a nice system in which you could probably invest in going forward. Like, so Dan, do you have like plans on doing other videos now that this has happened? Have you been thinking about other songs going forward, maybe working this same type of dynamic or? Um, I would, I would certainly love to. I mean, I, I did wind up um, hiring people that work not quite in the same way, but, but put together, the, I did three other videos for the songs that are on the same album, hyperbole and nouns and etymology. And I reached out to another friend, uh, David Coles, who's, who's done a bunch of videos for They Might Be Giants and done some stuff for me. Mm -hmm. And he has a partner, Jeremy, sort of like, you know, Mike and, and Eric, two guys that really know what they're doing, but they have, they both teach. So they both have students and interns and mm -hmm. things. So they, they said to me, listen, this is, we, we're not gonna, it may take months, it may take several months to get this done, but if you have the time, we can do this on a lower budget and it'll be more a collaborative thing. I'm going to sign this, mm -hmm. this one to this person. And then they, they would send me their, their ideas and, and, and things back um, just to make sure I was okay with everything. And, you know, to be honest, like, um, uh, you know, I, I had friends that played with David Bowie 
you know, before he passed. And one of the things that they said about him was that there was a thing and it could be laziness or just really just a smart way of doing things, but he would kind of hire people and just, you know, have full confidence in them and let them do, you know, do the thing like Gail Ann Dorsey was his bass player. When Gail first started playing with him, she wasn't sure she was good enough for the gig. And he was like, no, 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 you're going to be great for this. Like, right. you're the right person. I'm going to let you do your thing and it's going to work out fine. And it did. And so that's we. And when I called Eric, I felt like, OK, I know this guy is good. He'll, he, he's not going to want to do something that's not good. So when he said he had a friend named you know, Mike, I knew that he was going to be good. And then the same thing with David. I trust David. So if he has students and stuff, he's not going to have his worst student do a hack job on something, <laughs> right? He's right. going to get someone who's, got, who's young and has great ideas and is energetic and wants to do something to come up with some sports storyboards and things. And, and that's what's happened. Yeah, so in answer to your question, it's a long answer to your question, but yes, I am, I'm, I'm hoping to do more of this kind of thing. Um, I would love to. I mean, it, you know, it was really, really satisfying and uh, seems like a, a you know, cool way to work and not overstress any one group of people. And yeah, right. So, yeah. Well, it's it, I mean, like Mike was saying, the, even during COVID, like being able to do this kind of thing is great and powerful. We've actually learned that you can keep on producing, in, especially in animation during COVID. But on the flip side of that, you're a live musician. You want to have your stuff out there. What is like, how do you guys, how do you present this music? How do you present the album? Like, are you, are you doing any performances? Like, I mean, especially kids shows. I mean, I know with winter, it's like, you're not going to do anything outdoors on the East Coast, definitely. Right. So, <laughs> well, we have, but, uh, we, we, we do have some indoor shows coming up. Um, there's a children's museum here on Long Island that I'll be playing at, um, things like that. We did some shows in the fall. There were very few and far between because of COVID though, to, you know, as you would, would imagine. Sure. Um, fortunately for me, um, there's um, uh, kids radio around the country and Sirius XM has a 24 hour a day children's radio station, that sort of thing. Uh, I send the music to those uh, program directors and, uh, oh. you know, like five of the songs, I guess, have been picked up on radio oh. and been in rotation and that sort of thing. So, that's kind of how it's it's a more efficient way for me, especially during COVID, to at least, you know, I know that, you know, tens of thousands or however many people are at least getting to hear the songs and know that it's out and, um, right. and you know, the videos are, are available on YouTube and, and that sort of thing. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, you awesome. just, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, you got to be resourceful. You got to figure out how to go. And it's like, you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, radio, that, radio that has been a big thing for me. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's exciting. I, I'm, I'm interested in knowing, like, if you have the venues I could uh, link up to when I post this, uh, I could, you know, kind of just spread the word about the, the things that you have around on the horizon okay. or about album information yeah. and stuff like that, definitely. And sure. um, just on the, go ahead. No, 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 sure. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. I would yeah. appreciate it. Um, and in terms of like uh, the donation to uh, their charitable organizations, was there anything like, was that just kind of like, was there a charitable organization that everyone kind of donated to, or was that just kind of like, no, 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 everybody chose their favorite. Let me know what they were. And I made no, I made donations to all, there were many, many different ones, actually. Um, so, uh -huh. you know, some, there was some overlap, but it was, it was quite a few different ones. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. And I mean, all I like all like really amazing causes. Some were like for literacy. Some were for schools in, in Africa. What, you know, a great variation. Um, helping uh, new immigrants down by the southern border. You know, lots of various different types of uh, save the children that sort of thing. Um, yeah, a lot of uh -huh. great. Um, some were more local, and some were more uh, uh, you know uh, international. So it really varied. Right. That's cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, thank you very much for this. I mean, the, the song's great. The video is so much fun to watch. I look forward to seeing uh, future videos that you're going to do. If you're doing some stop motion thoughts, I, I, I think we connected uh, earlier about, I keep forgetting sure. the name of it, but what was the name of that one with uh, Mr. Super Bookman Dude? Yeah. Super Bookman Dude. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I just found the drawing that I did for Super Bookman. Oh. Dude. So I will follow up with you. Forward it, crazy, it over but... to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because and Mike, be a, you know, since we're 
we're talking live, live yeah. face to face, sort of face to face. Thank you, man. If Thank I were you. there, yeah. I'd give you, I'd give you a hug. You know, I, I, I'd accept it and return it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, absolutely. It was. Um, thank you so much for your work. And, and uh, yeah, it was a real pleasure, man. I really enjoyed yeah. the process. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And thanks Great. for having us. Dave. Well, yeah. Yeah. No. No. No problem. Thanks for being here. Thanks for the the song. And uh, what we're probably gonna do. This is gonna be a little, a little bit of a standalone piece. So right from here, we're gonna go right into the music video. So if anyone's watching this right now, please enjoy uh, Danny Weinkoff's work. Thank you very much. Help each other grow now. Educate, give them strength with the know how. Cultivate brotherhood, we can show how. Demonstrate, everyone will be woke now. Whoa. Try to sing it Dignity And respect We can bring it Prosperity Everyone can you ching it Unity All together We can swing it Whoa. Whoa. Understanding Grace And kindness Words of comfort each other grow now educate give them strength with the know-how cultivate brotherhood we can show how demonstrate everyone will be woke now understanding Help us love 